everybody. My name is Adam Miles, and welcome to I Need Something to Watch, the show that looks to throw recommendations at you for your horror-fueled nights of watching. Oh, love. Such a splendorous thing. Classic tales of love and even lust thrust their way into the genre on a regular basis, taking advantage of the easily smitten. Whether you avoid getting impaled on Cupid's arrow or you take one to the heart this week, these movies will definitely do the trick. First movie of the night. A movie that seems to have been kind of forgotten by time, even though it's not really that old. And uh, I mean, maybe it's just because I am fucking old at this point. The movie itself got kind of mixed in with a whole bunch of other very generic slasher types from the late 90s, early 2000s. Today we have Valentine from 2001. Directed by Jamie Blanks, who's most well known in the horror community for also providing us one of those 90s slashers, Urban Legend. The flick also stars David Boreanaz, well known to any kid of the 90s as Angel on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and subsequently the show Angel itself, when he was trying to jump into the Hollywood film industry a little bit more rather than just television series. So what's it about? Picture this. Late 1980s, young, nerdish little boy named Jeremy who just so happens to, at a dance, be rejected by every girl that he asks. Except for one, a girl named Dorothy. A group of bullies actually finds them making out under the bleachers at the dance, where Dorothy proceeds to tell them that Jeremy attacked her. The boys respond with violence, beating him up and ultimately stripping off his clothes. Roughly 12 years later, all those girls, those same girls that rejected him, are enjoying the dating scene. They're young, they're somewhat single, and they're just enjoying life. However, Jeremy has mysteriously disappeared. One of the girls, Shelly, is savagely murdered by a tall man in a long dark coat wearing a cherub mask. It turns out that just before Shelly's death, she had actually received a Valentine card. The other girls seem to soon start receiving cards of their own. One at a time, they mysteriously start to die violently themselves. So why do you want to watch it? First off, I'm a sucker for slasher movies with an interesting or a different mask. And frankly, I thought the cherub mask was actually pretty cool, and I still do when I look back at this movie. The killer also tends to get nosebleeds, which kind of changes the look of the mask slightly when all of a sudden out the actual nose of the mask, drips of blood start to happen, and it just smears on the mask. It's pretty cool. The movie also actually has a decent cast rounding it out, so it's not just David Boreanaz. We have the likes of a young Katherine Heigl, Denise Richards, and even Mary Shelton. Yes, the movie itself is kind of an atypical 90s slasher, but... Don't let that stop you. Once again, keep with the theme. Go check it out. The Bride of Frankenstein. Second recommendation of the night. We actually have an Australian flick that I'm going to throw out there. One that actually does get brought up a lot in conversation. It's got a big following behind it, but let's push it out to as many people as we possibly can. The Loved Ones from 2009. From director Sean Byrne, who also gave us genre film The Devil's Candy. This is not your typical girl-loves-boy movie, far from it. What is it about? After a tragic accident where high school senior Brent Mitchell wraps his car around a tree, ultimately killing his father, he's continuously confronted by the emotional collapse of his own mother. And to block his pain, he escapes into a drug and heavy metal-fueled world of his own making. Dejected and somewhat lost, he eventually does find a... A reason for a happiness and something that could potentially take him out of this world that he's created for himself. And that exists in his new girlfriend, Holly. A young, grounded, and caring, as well as amazingly good looking, she's the perfect date for the formal or the prom. His plans are ultimately thwarted by a disturbing set of events that all take place under a mirror disco ball involving... Pink satin, a drill, glitter, syringes, nails, and a secret admirer. Brent has suddenly become the prom king at a macabre event where he is also the entertainment. So why do you want to watch it? First off, the effects work and the practical behind it. The torture scenes alone are wince-inducing. And by all means, isn't that why we watch a lot of these movies, folks? We want to see that situation unfold in as much gory and gruesome detail as possible. The movie has a huge and prominently shown influence from such classics as my personal favorite, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974, Carrie, as well as Misery. And I, like a whole bunch of other people, personally believe that this movie created one of the most vile female villains in horror movie history. <laughs> Third movie recommendation for the evening, 
because once again i am a firm believer that everything happens in threes and i kind of hope that you wouldn't think that i would do a love themed episode without mentioning this classic my bloody valentine 1981 the classic canadian slasher directed by george mahalka shot all but driving distance from where i sit now recording this to you the movie actually fits into what my dear friend tim johnson actually states is his sweet spot for horror late 70s early 80s when things just seemed to be right when it came to horror movies so what's it about valentine's day 20 years prior to the main events of the movie an explosion of methane gas took the lives of a group of miners that are working in the hanegers mines in valentine's bluff nova scotia the accident occurred because their supervisors had kind of skipped out early to attend a valentine's day dance one year after the incident itself the only person to have escaped the actual incident a person by the name of harry warden murdered those supervisors and left a very grim and terrifying warning that the town should never ever celebrate or hold a valentine's day dance again skip 20 years a group of young people from the town of valentine's bluff have decided to take it upon themselves to push away the old scary and grim warnings they're going to hold the first valentine's day dance since the incident when a blood-soaked heart in a box shows up at the police station as a warning not to continue the dance is cancelled However, the group of young people that are adamant to actually hold this move ahead despite warnings. And it isn't long before they start to die very violently. It appears that Harry Warden himself has returned to punish those who have not heeded his warning. So why do you want to watch this movie? First and foremost, sets are a key part of this movie. It was actually filmed in working mines in Sydney Mines, Nova Scotia, which kind of really sets the tone. Small town vibes, fears, it's a big part of this all. The movie also contains its own folk song ballad, The Ballad of Harry Warden. I mean, that's a rare thing on its own. They don't make movies like that to have their own ballads anymore, folks. As well, the effects work in this movie stand up even by today's standards. In fact, even back in that day when they were filming it, the director openly admitted to having vomited as per seeing one of the effects work live on set being used. Also, this movie still has a huge following over in Europe, specifically apparently Germany. And finally, Quentin Tarantino himself has been quoted as stating that this movie, My Bloody Valentine from 1981, is in fact his favorite slasher movie of all time. <laughs> Short and sweet, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. I just wanted to take that opportunity and say thank you once again. If you really like the content that you've been watching, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button down below here, and get notified whenever we put out new episodes and new recommendations. Be sure to also check out the rest of what we produce on The Misunderstood Art Company, including a show that I'm very proud of, where me and a bunch of friends get together, fellow horror fanatics, and we discuss movies in greater detail. That's called They Cast from the Coast. Until next time, Keep it creepy.